Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Mead Made, and I think I've lost count of how many messages I have gotten over the years that start something like this. Hey Chris, I just got my first 3D printer, but, and then you can insert any beginner mistake right there. And honestly, I get it, because I've been there too. When you first start out, you, you don't know what you don't know, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's why, in this video, I'm going to be breaking down the biggest beginner mistakes, but I'm not just going to be listing them off. We're going to move through them in the order that most of these happen to beginners. From that first unboxing to your very first successful 3D print. So, let's start where every beginner starts. Thinking that it's as simple as just hitting print. <laughs> Back when I started 3D printing, the tech for home 3D printers was relatively new to everyone. Tinkering was just a part of the process. You expected to fix things, adjust settings, and learn by doing. And, well, failing. A lot. But printers are more accessible and beginner friendly than they ever have been. Which is awesome, but that's also part of the trap. The marketing makes these sound like you can just plug them in and hit print, and everything will work perfectly. They're acting like it's a coffee maker or a microwave. That's, that's where a lot of beginners get blindsided. The first big mistake is believing 3D printers work just like appliances. Even the best printers need attention. Belts loosen, nozzles clog, sensors, they go bad. So ask yourself, what happens when your first print fails? When your nozzle jams halfway through a 10-hour job? If you don't understand what's happening inside that machine, you're stuck, waiting for luck to fix it. You don't have to become a full-blown tinkerer. You don't have to rebuild it or mod everything. But you do need to learn the basics of maintenance and troubleshooting. And speaking of maintenance and troubleshooting, this next thing really helped me out on many occasions. I always think of the Boy Scout motto, be prepared when addressing this next mistake. It always finds a way to happen at the worst possible time. So something recently that happened to me is I was running a late night print on my X1 Carbon for a friend. It had to be finished by the morning, but before I headed to bed, I went down to check on it and saw that the printer was paused and there was a filament error. When I looked closer, I realized that the PTFE tube had worn through and the filament was just pushing out the side instead of pushing into the hot end. Now I didn't have enough time to start it on another printer and without a fix, I, that print would have not have been done on time. But thankfully, I had my maintenance kit right there. I clipped the filament, swapped the new PTFE tube, hit resume on the printer, and it picked up right where it left off. Then, by morning, it was finished and it was perfect. Now, this is why I always tell beginners have a small maintenance kit ready before something breaks. A few spare parts like PTFE tubes, some nozzles, some pliers, Allen keys, a really good scraper, like I love my Panda Edge, and even a brass brush to wipe off your nozzle. Now those simple tools can save an entire project sometimes. And I put together a free 3D printing maintenance kit with all of the items I use. And you can grab that from the link down below if you want to build your own. Because when you're prepared, you can stay printing even when things go wrong. And once you're ready for those problems, there's another mistake that stops a lot of beginners before they even start printing at all. Now this next one really did take me by surprise. I have had a lot of people reaching out to me saying, Chris, I've got a 3D printer, but I'm afraid to use it. And honestly, the number of people that have said this to me, you might be surprised. There are usually, I've found, two groups of people. The first, are people who want a 3D printer and maybe even got one as a gift, but it's still sitting in a box. The second group, 
They've got the gear, they've got it beautifully organized and set up. They've got all of their spools and tools in the right spot. And honestly, I'm kind of jealous of some of these setups, but they barely print. The common thread is, is that they really are excited about 3D printing and they want to get into 3D printing because of all the things they see online and the things that they can make. But there's some kind of paralysis or roadblock happening there. So the third big mistake is getting stuck in setup mode. You've done everything except the thing you actually bought the printer for, 3D printing. And I think a lot of this comes from fear. Fear of wasting filament, fear of breaking something, fear of the time, of just being like overwhelmed by how much there is to learn. And that's true, especially if you're not a techie person. But here's the truth. You can't learn to 3D print without 3D printing. Your first prints don't need to be perfect. They just need to exist. Every failed print teaches you something valuable. If you've got the gear, make it worth the investment. Start with a small print, maybe like a calibration cube or a small little tool holder, anything. Once you get that first win, even if it's tiny, your confidence will start to skyrocket. And it's the main reason that I include monthly print challenges in my guild membership. That way, you can learn and gain confidence every single print. And once you decide to hit print, the next mistake can unfortunately set you up for failure right out of the gate. Alright, so real quick. If you have been looking for a place to really learn 3D printing with support from other makers, then you might be interested in the 3D Print Guild. That is what it's all about. Inside, you'll get monthly courses, live calls, we have Q&A sessions, where we tackle your questions and challenges together. It's a community built around learning, encouragement, and helping each other improve with every print. So the doors to the guild are closed right now, but they will be opening soon. If you use the link below to join the waitlist, I will notify you the next time the doors open. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about one of the biggest beginner mistakes I see, and that is printing files you did not slice yourself. That includes those pre-sliced 3MF files you download online, models that you can send straight to your printer from the Bamboo Handy app, or even those ready-to-print files that come on your printer or SD cards. I get why it's tempting. It feels like a quick and simple, safe, and a done-for-you solution. But here's the problem. You have no idea what settings those files were sliced with. They might have been made for a totally different printer, a different nozzle size, or even different filament. And when something goes wrong, you'll think it's the printer, when the problem is baked into the file right from the start. Slicing is where all of the controls live. Your layer height, your infill, your temperature, your speed, supports, I mean everything that affects your print quality. So even if you download the model, Always open it in your slicer, verify the settings, and re-slice it with your specific setup. Now, even if you've done it before and it worked out fine, trust me, it only takes one minute, but it'll save you hours of frustration. Now that we've talked about slicers, let's talk about this next mistake. It's massively overlooked by beginners, and it's something I teach on all the time. So, when you have a 3D model, you import it into the slicer, you slice it, you print it, and you're done, right? And that's where I'm going to say not exactly. This is a super common mistake, and I see it a lot. Importing a model into your slicer and assuming the way it comes in is the best way it's meant to be printed. There are a lot of great 3D artist designers out there. And I mean incredible models, but they don't always 3D print. So when they export their file, it might look great on screen, but it's faced or angled in a weird way that makes no sense for 3D printing. Beginners often just hit slice and print, and that's when problems start. You end up with tons of supports, poor surface quality, weak parts that snap way too easy. Orientation affects everything. 
supports, surface finish, strength, even a small rotation can completely change the results of your 3D prints. Sometimes, even tilting a model just 10 degrees can reduce supports, improve surface quality, and give you cleaner, stronger prints. Now, this is something I teach inside the 3D Print Guild a lot. Helping people get that aha moment when they finally understand that just a little bit of rotation can make a huge impact on the quality of their prints. And once you understand that, you can get such better results and more consistent results. And even after you master orientation, there's another mistake that can undo all of your progress, especially when you're trying to fix too many things at once. This is something I did a lot when I first started out, and it's really easy to fall into. And that's trying to fix everything at once when your prints go wrong. The print fails, panic sets in, and suddenly you're adjusting your temperatures, you're re-leveling your bed, you're changing out filament and swapping out other parts, all in one go. You change so many things that when you fix the problem, you have no idea what worked. Or worse, it gets even harder to diagnose because you don't know what's making it worse or better. 3D printing is all about cause, and effect. If you change multiple variables all at once, you lose track of what actually made the difference. It's kind of like if you're trying to tune a guitar, but instead of just changing one of those knobs, you're actually turning all of the knobs at once. It's just not going to work. That's why the best way to troubleshoot is really simple. Change one thing at a time. Run a small test print and then learn from those results. That is how you get consistent, repeatable success. And once you start mastering that methodical mindset, there's one more mistake that I constantly see in Facebook groups and forums that can cause a lot of problems long term, especially if you're printing in the wrong place. And that is when people are printing right next to their beds or in their bedrooms right where they sleep. And I get it. Printers today look modern, clean, and quiet, and it's easy to kind of think that, you know, they're completely safe. But they're not. They're still melting plastic at high temperatures. Even PLA, which is labeled non-toxic, can release ultra-fine particles and fumes from all of those additives. If you've ever looked at the MSDS sheets from filament manufacturers, you might notice that many of them actually warn about having good ventilation while printing. Now those warnings are there for a reason. It's not to panic you, but it's really about awareness. Now I've always printed in well ventilated areas and always kept away from common living spaces. And that's really what I recommend for everyone. Treat your printer like a small tool in your workshop. Give it airflow, use an enclosure, or vent it if you can, and definitely avoid running it right beside where you sleep. Now, when it comes to mistakes, I didn't cover everything. There are still filament mistakes, first layer mistakes, slicer mistakes, and plenty of other things that can trip up beginners. So, if you'd like me to break down these in future videos, just let me know down in the comments. And as always, I wish you a great day, and I will see you in the next video right here.